Action Army, what's going on? Guess what? I just took a nap and it messed me all up. You ever take a nap in, in the middle of the day and you wake up and you're like, yes, I feel refreshed. And then other times you take a nap in the middle of the day and you're like, dang, I feel like I just got hit by a train. Well, today's one of those days where I took a nap and I feel like I got hit by a train. Same with this dude. Look at him. Cairo also feels like he got hit by a train. However, today, I would like to talk about how you can create your own vertical jump program. I still think you should get Beyond the Rim too. I still think my vertical jump program will be better than yours. I have to, I've been doing this for 10 years. But if you don't wanna get Beyond the Rim too, if you don't wanna get um, vert code, or if you don't wanna go with THP strength, if you wanna create your own specific to you, I'm gonna talk about how you can create your very own vertical jump, or if you don't have the money. Get your money up, come on. I know you're on your grind right now, and you're working on it. I know you're working on it because you're part of the Action Army. But if you don't want one of these coaches' vertical jump programs, if you don't have the money for it right now, or you just wanna create your own, let's talk about how you can do that. But first, let's play Cairo's favorite game, Cairo. Do you wanna play a game? Yeah, come on, you wanna play a game. Step number one to this game, go, is we lock Cairo in the bathroom. Hold on bro, let me, let me explain. It's not what you think, this is just step one. Then we get out some of Cairo's treats. We'll use these ones right here. Then we break them up into tiny little pieces like this. And then we hide them all around the house and he has to use his nose to find them. He gotta sniff them out. So we'll put one right here on the squat rack. We'll put one over here on this basketball. We gotta give him a hard one. I'm putting one right here underneath these rings. We'll put one right here on the drying rack. I mean, the ladder, which we use to dry our clothes. The clothes that can't be dried. The ones that they will shrink if you put them in the dryer. We're gonna put one up here on the lock, on the deadbolt. Put one on the stool, put one up here on the couch, put one on this door handle, put one up here on the bed frame right next to my mouth tape that I use to tape my mouth shut every single night. Put one on the bedroom fan, and we'll put this one right here on this light switch. Found one more, I'm gonna put it on the Peloton bike seat. All right, Cairo? You ready? Let's go. Use your sniffer, come on. This is what we've been training for. Yep, easily found that one. This is what we've been working for. The dog sniffing Olympics. You gotta win this thing. Yep, slight work. Yep, got that one on the couch. Oh, walked right past it. Sniffer's broken. Oh, found this one. Look at that. Got that one. He's gonna be unlocking the door soon, let me in. Walked right past it again. Smells it. Oh yeah. We'll save that one, I guess. Yep, got it. Good boy. Oh no, I know you smell it. You're all around it. There you go. There's no way. Oh my goodness. 
I really thought he was not going to get that one. Wow. I'm proud of you. Good job. All right, guys, so there's only two left. There's one here on the bike seat of the Peloton, and there's one in there on the fan, and he just keeps walking past them. So, dang, bro, you gonna pick that up? So what we're gonna do is, I'm just gonna go hit my workout, and then we're gonna talk about, come on, for the camera, one time for the one time. Get it. I ain't getting it for you. It'll be there. All right, well, he just keeps walking past these, so we're gonna go hit our workout, we're gonna hit our dunk session, and then, we are gonna talk about how to schedule your own workout. And not just how to schedule your own workout, how to create your entire vertical jump program for yourself. Let's get it. Very quickly, Action Army, look at this sign. This is the realest thing I've ever seen. This sums up the Action Army, and this is what we are all about. This is the beginning of a new day. You have been given this day to use as you will. You can waste it, or you can use it for good. What you do today is important because you are exchanging a day of your life for it. When tomorrow comes, this day will be gone forever. In its place is something that you have left behind. Let it be something good. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the realest thing I've ever seen. Because when tomorrow comes, what you did yesterday. So let's, talk, let's think about what I did yesterday. Did I lay around and watch and scroll on TikTok and watch Netflix and play video games and do nothing that is gonna progress my life? Or did I work on programs? Did I do a workout? Did I make a video? Did I do things that are going to progress my life and move me towards my goals? Because I can't get yesterday back. Yesterday has gone forever. So I either moved the needle and I moved it toward, I moved my life towards my goals or Yesterday is gone forever and I didn't move the needle. And stack enough of those together where you don't move the needle and eventually you don't reach your goals. Stack enough of them together where you do move the needle and eventually you will reach your goals. That's why today, ladies and gentlemen, is very, very important. You can use it for good or you can let it be wasted. But if you're part of the Action Army, you already know we about to put in this work. It's the anthem. If I give you my word, that's what I stand on. Loyalty and trust is what I stand on. Family and love is what I stand on. Talking big, big. I knew that one day that I could make it big, big. I'm talking how to stay smoking without a sense. Now we get up and do it like we got a big rig. It's getting serious. I know you're curious. To some losses through the process, have me curious. But I got eyes on the vision, can't get delirious. All right, Action Army, let's talk about how you can create your very own vertical jump training program. This is going to be such a fire video. I still think that you should get Beyond the Rim 2. I made Beyond the Rim 2 a year long. It used to be 21 weeks. Now it's a year. Fire. But if you want to create your very own program, I have seven steps for you. And these seven steps are going to start a little more basic, a little more general, and then we'll get more and more advanced as we go on. So here we go. I'm going to try to do this in one take. I'm going to try not to pause, um, but I'm going to try not to forget anything as well. I got my notebook right here so that I make sure I give you all the information that you need to create your own program. Here we go. Step number one in creating your own program is that you need to schedule out your phases. What are your phases going to be? How many weeks are your phases going to be? How are your phases going to build on top of one another? So um, what I would do if I were you is... I would start with a hypertrophy phase first, a build the base phase. Then I would go into a strength phase. Then I would go into a power phase and then I would go into a speed phase. And the reason for this is because strength is the backbone of all other dynamic movement. You want to build your power and your speed on top of a solid strength foundation. That's why it's so important to build the base first and then do your max strength after that, and then get into your power work, and then get into your speed work. So build the strength, then get more explosive on top of a solid, sturdy strength foundation. So 
Those are what I would do for the phases. And I would do those phases for anywhere from three to eight weeks. If you're a beginner, then I would go more towards eight weeks. If you want to just touch on something, touch on a parameter like power or speed or strength, then I would go more towards three weeks. But if you are lacking strength and you need to bring up your strength, I would do eight weeks of strength training. So anywhere from three to eight weeks is going to be good for the duration, the length of your phases. And then I've already told you, I answered my question, how you are going to build on top of one another, build the base and then your strength and then your power and then your speed. That is step one, schedule out your phases. Step number two is in each week of your program, what are your days going to look like? Monday, Monday, I almost said Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. What workouts are you going to do? You can't do very high intensity, high volume workouts every single day. So what I would do if I was you is I would have a high intensity, hard workout on Monday and Friday. Wednesday, it's going to be a medium intensity workout. Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, you can have low intensity workouts and Sunday can even be a rest day if you want it to be. So that's step number two, schedule out. Some people like, like myself, I'm 31. I can't recover as well as I did when I was 21. That's just it. I said, I'm never getting old. Guess what, motherfucker? You're getting old. So I can't recover as well as I did when I was a little bit younger. So now I might need a little bit more rest or I might need to be a little bit more careful about my volume. So step number two, schedule out your days. If I were you, I'd do Monday and Friday, high intensity, Wednesday, medium intensity, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, low intensity. So you got your mobility. Anything that doesn't cause breakdown would be fine on those days. And then Sunday, you could either do some more, you know, mobility or low level work, or you could just take it as a rest. That is step number two. Step number three is that as a beginner, you want to do mixed training. When you get more advanced, if you're an advanced athlete, mixed training is you're going to begin to plateau and then you might need to get more specific, but we're going to go broad. We're going to go general at first. So in each one of your workouts, we'll say just your high intensity workouts. So you're in your medium. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you want to schedule your workouts like this. Warm up first, speed and plyometrics second. Power is the third thing that you do. Then you do some strength. Then you do hypertrophy and prehab work. And prehab work can also go uh, at the beginning if you want to do some isometrics before you get into everything else. That is fine too. But you should do speed, or sorry, warm up, speed, power, strength, hypertrophy. That is how your workouts should be scheduled for mixed training. Mixed training is excellent for beginners and intermediate athletes. So, just an example workout that might mean you do your warm-up we'll say you do exercise bike or you go play uh, one game of pickup basketball you do reverse dead mills that's your warm-up then you have your speed and plyometrics so we're going to do some sprints actually sprints actually fatigue me for the rest of but it might not do that for you so for me i might do some pogo jumps or some depth jumps or some reactive jumps that's going to be my speed work then i might do some hang cleans or some power cleans for my power work then i might do uh, some heavy back squats for my strength work. Then I might do some single leg RDLs and some hyper extensions for my uh, hypertrophy work. And then at the end, maybe my prehab work, I just, you know, do some reverse Nordics or something like that. So that is a workout that I would do. Now, this is very important because I already know that you're screaming at your camera right now. You have questions that I'm not answering. So I'm going to answer your questions here. This might be a question you didn't even know you had, but you're going to have this question. So you're going to say, in my strength phases, how is it a strength phase if I'm just doing speed and power and strength and hypertrophy? Isn't it like, how is that a strength phase? This is how, because in your strength phase, you just want the majority of your training to be focused on improving your strength. In power, the power phase, the majority should be power training. In your speed phase, the majority should be speed training. But you want to work on your speed, your power, your strength in every single phase. You don't want to just work on your strength and then get to your power and your speed phase and never touch heavy weight again, never touch strength work again. So you want to be integrating it into all of these phases, but the majority of your training is whatever parameter you're trying to bring up in that phase. So for example, if you're in the strength phase, my workout might be one speed exercise, one power exercise, 
three strength exercises and then one hypertrophy exercise. And strength and hypertrophy is kind of intertwined there. If I'm in my power phase, I might do one speed, so my warm up, hit on one speed, just touch on it, then three power exercises, and then one strength and one hypertrophy. If I'm in my speed phase, I might do my warm up, then three or four speed or plyometric exercises, and then just touch on power or touch on speed. So that is how you want to hit every parameter. You want to do mixed training, but in each concurrent phase, you want to make sure that the majority of your training is whatever parameter you are trying to bring up in that phase. Step number four is you want to make sure that you are not neglecting any exercises or any parameters. So step number four is where you add your exercises. So now you have the skeleton. You have your phases laid out. You have your days laid out and your weeks laid out. Now you just start to pick, hmm, I want unilateral here bilateral here. I want anterior chain here. I want posterior chain here. Ah, I see that I touched on every muscle group here, except I missed my hamstrings. Let me make sure I add my hamstrings in here. Ah, I see that I haven't done reactive strength for three weeks. Let me add in some reactive strength. So now step four is where you want to make sure that you add in your exercises and you touch on every single muscle group and you touch on every single parameter. So you got your max strength, your reactive strength, your starting strength, your rate of force development, your force absorption training. You got your stretch shortening cycle, fast and slow. You got your unilateral work. You got your bilateral work. You got your eccentric work. You got your isometric work. And a lot of this intertwines and overlaps. So don't get, don't get wild. A lot of this overlaps. You can work on you know, your, your eccentric work and your force absorption training, like that's very similar. If I drop off a box, I'm hitting eccentric work. I'm also hitting force absorption training. If I do a, a, a seated squat where I start from the bottom and I go up, I'm working on my rate of force development, but also my starting strength. So a lot of this intertwines, but step number four is where you add in your exercises and you make sure that you hit each muscle group don't neglect any muscle groups. So just very quickly, you guys all know this, but you want to hit your core. You want to hit your, uh, what the hell are these? You want to hit your hip flexors. You want to hit your quads, your tibialis anterior. You want to hit your low back. You want to hit your glutes. You want to hit your hamstrings and your calves. Anterior chain, posterior chain. Then all your parameters that you want to hit, make sure you got your reactive strength, your starting strength. I actually wrote it down. Let me see what did I write down. You want to make sure that you hit Max strength, reactive strength, rate of force development, starting strength, technique work, forgot that one, force absorption, eccentrics, isos, stretch shortening cycle, speed, power, unilateral strength, post chain, anterior chain, that's what I wrote down, but remember, a lot of that over overlaps, so do not get overwhelmed. Step number five, in creating your very own vertical jump program, if you're not gonna get beyond the rim two, is you wanna make sure that you progressive overload properly. So in order for your vertical jump to increase, you want to go intense enough to cause change in your body. Force your body to change and jump higher. But you don't want to go too fast. You don't want to do too much that you start to get some little nagging overuse injuries. So this one is very important. In your build the base phase, that's where you're obviously building the base. And then on strength, that's where you're building on top of that. But you should be progressive overloading into your strength phase. And even when you get into your power phase, you need to be progressive overloading. And progressive overload doesn't always mean going up in weight because when you're in the strength phase, you're gonna be going heavier. And when you're in the power phase, you're gonna be going a little bit lighter. So strength might be 80% and above of your one rep max might be lower reps power might also be lower reps but it might be 30 to 80 percent of your one rep max so that you can move the weight faster speed might be plyometrics or between zero and 30 of your one rep max you might be doing dumbbell jumps and so my point is that you want to make sure that you progressive overload and progressive overload doesn't always have to mean improving the weight it can mean harder exercises it can mean harder variations of the exercises it could be moving the weight faster that's a great way if you're trying to increase your vertical jump to progressive overload. But step number five is that you need to add in, you need to schedule in progressive overload. Step number six in creating your very own vertical jump program is you want to move. At le so let's say I would go through these phases, build the base, strength, power, speed. And then if you found that you pick up some nagging injuries, you might want to go back to build the base, strength, power, speed, or if you're feeling great, you might want to go build the base, strength, power, speed, power, strength. 
power, speed, and just go kind of like peaks and valleys. So get your strength up and then go back to power and speed. Then get your strength back up, power and speed. So, and remember you're touching on each parameter in your speed training, in your speed phase, you're still doing heavy weight training about once every four or five workouts to touch on strength. We talked about this, but step number six is that you need to get more specific. So mixed training is excellent for beginners, excellent for intermediate athletes. But once you start to see plateaus in your vertical jump, you might need to get more specific. And by more specific, I mean that you might need to have a full workout where every single exercise is on building strength. So you do your warm up. And then after that, you're going to do your heavy squats. And then you're going to do your Nordics and your step ups and every single exercise in that workout. This is a full strength workout. And then maybe the next workout, it's a power workout where all you do is your warm up and then you do all power exercises. So instead of speed, power, strength, hypertrophy, now we are doing power, 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 power. It is a full specific power workout. And the way that you can still use your phases, your strength, your power, and your speed phase is now you need to have, let's say, two strength workouts for every one speed workout and one power workout or in your strength phase three workouts that are solely just strength for every one workout of this power and then one workout that is speed so you might do in your strength phase strength workout power workout strength workout speed workout strength workout power workout strength workout speed workout and then in your speed phase it might be speed strength speed power speed strength speed power in your power and it might in your power phase it might be power strength power speed so the majority is still on whatever phase you're in whatever parameter you're trying to bring up the most but you are now getting more specific where every single exercise in that workout is trying to bring up the same parameter no more mixed training once you get advanced. And then step number seven in the last step is you need to be intuitive and get specific to you. What do you need to bring up? Are you not strong? Well, then your power development and your speed development aren't going to be as good or as effective because you're lacking the backbone of everything, which is strength. You, it's easier to build power and speed on top of a good, solid sound foundation of max strength. You need to be strong without energy leaks like ankle and knee pain. So you might need to bring up this stuff first and then you might need to get more specific, but you need to get specific to you and be honest with, you, with yourself. What am I lacking? Am I lacking max strength? Okay, maybe I need to work on strength. Am I lacking max strength? Nah, I have strength, but I'm just not fast. I might need to spend some extra time in my speed work, in my speed phase. So now my strength phase might be four weeks, my power phase four weeks, but my speed phase is eight weeks because I really need to bring that up. So step number seven in creating your very own program, this is once you get advanced, is you need to be intuitive. You need to start to realize what you are lacking in your vertical jump and start to bring up that parameter. Anyways, guys, leave your questions down below. I probably left out so much, but this gives you a good idea of how to create your very own vertical jump training program. And this was day 18. I have no clue what day we're on. 18, 19, 17, whatever day we're on, we are dunking 365 days this year. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace. It's the anthem. If I give you my word, that's what I stand on. Loyalty and trust is what I stand on. Family and love is what I stand on. Talking big, big. I knew that one day that I could make it big, big. I'm talking how to stay smoking without a sense. Now we get up and do it like we got a big wig. It's getting serious. I know you're curious. See some losses through the process, have me furious. But I got eyes on the vision, can't get delirious. Fall in love with the game and then you marry it. I think I'm married. It. This the anthem. If you rockin' with it, put your hands up. It's the anthem If you get up and get it, put your hands up Yeah It's one for the winners if you with me, yeah Hands up in the sky if you feel me, yeah It's one for the winners if you with me, yeah Hands up in the sky if you feel me, yeah It's the anthem If 
If I give you my word, that's what I stand on Loyalty and trust is what I stand on Family and love is what I stand on If it's love, I gotta tat it Father, I'm not absent I was working smarter back when they was working backwards Do it for the Grammy, only do it for a catch. Dropping back to back, but really I've been relaxing I might go for months, I could go for years If I take a break, I promise I'll be relapsing Started from the mud, I just need a traction Started with a buck, now I tell the label match it